Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Yep, that's my car at work and I've lost a lot of coolant because the expansion tank has failed, which is a normal occurrence on BMW engines of this vintage. I will be doing a, a video regarding replacing the expansion tank next, but I thought I'd do one regarding bleeding of the V8 and V12 BMW engines first because there's so much written about bleeding on the forums and there seems to be some sort of, well, witchcraft involved in doing it. But I can assure you that there isn't. And if you do it in the correct order and using the correct coolant and doing it with it within five minutes, and that's very important to do it within five minutes from a cold start, then this will work 100% of the time. I've never had a problem of failing to bleed. I've never had overheating problems afterwards. And as long as you follow this procedure, then I can promise you that you will not have overheating problems unless you've got a problem with your cooling system. And have a watch of my video regarding the BMW V8 and V12 cooling systems if you do have any problems. Right, the first thing to do is to get the car facing up a hill. If you've got an empty cooling system, then get someone to help you push it down the curb so the front's high, higher than the back. And put a catch can under the car because antifreeze is highly poisonous and it attracts cats and dogs because of its sweet smell. And they will die a horrible death if they do slurp up any antifreeze. And when we finish the procedure, we'll wash the drive down as well to dilute any splashes. But very important, um, have a catch can in place. Right, time to refill the system. I'm using BMW's antifreeze. Comes in one and a half litre bottles for 10 quid, direct from BMW. Absolutely no point in using anything else. This has got plasticizers in it, anti-corrosion elements, and lubricants. So the float's floating, and top hose is completely empty, and that's quite normal for a drain of this size. So what we'll do is we'll start the engine, and we'll clear the top of the engine, refit the bleed screw loosely, and put the expansion tank cap somewhere to hand. We'll put the heater on full blast, so hottest temperature, and the fan running at full speed. Direction flaps to all directions, and that will ensure that the water valves are open, heater valves are open, and the coolant will have to circulate through those. So as soon as you start the engine, what you'll find is the float will start to sink, and we top it up for the first 30 seconds to make sure the float remains either above or at the level of the neck. Don't forget, you've only got five minutes to do this whole procedure from start to finish. Take any longer than that and the engine will reach a temperature where the coolant will start boiling in the heads. Even with a car like this, with an 85 degree stat, um, the head will reach boiling temperature. That will introduce gas into the system and you might as well give up. So five minutes, set a, set a stopwatch or something to make sure you don't overrun it. So I just fiddle around with the bleed screw, cap still off of the expansion tank, have a good check around, make sure nothing leaking out of the bottom of the car, and then rev up the engine. And what you'll find is the coolant will appear out of the bleed hole at the top of the expansion tank. And make sure it does that, because if it doesn't when the engine's revved up, that means the coolant isn't circulating and something's wrong. But in our case, that's fine, it's circulating. That's actually the air release hole, actually, in the expansion tank. And the expansion tank automatically removes air from the coolant, and the air comes out of that hole. But if you rev it up enough, then you get the coolant coming out as well. And you can see it's sort of sputtering around as air pops out. So I'm quite happy that. That's the coolant circulating. Everything's fine. The level's still fine. Um, what I do now is I refit the cap and that's the last time the cap comes off because as we said we're probably up to about the four minute mark. Engine's reaching temperature and all we can do now is remove the bleed screw. That's not attached to the, the actual tank itself. 
it's attached to the bleed pipe which runs from the right hand side of the radiator to the aperture and uh, what we do is we remove the screw, the screw entirely and rev it up until coolant starts coming out there we go we're good put that back in quickly we're not going to get burnt because the coolant hasn't reached temperature yet and we do that just a couple of times within our five minute limit so there's one time about 30 seconds later come back and do the same and if coolant starts coming out that's fine we don't have to worry about it and it's sort of half coming out so we'll remove the bleed screw entirely and do the same procedure rev up the engine until coolant starts coming out we're not going to lose much there we go that's the coolant coming back out again so that's, I'm perfectly happy with that good and then refit the bleed screw and tighten it up and that's our five minutes up and uh, that's all the bleeding we're going to do at least for four hours so I'm going to pop in the car with the engine running gauge is right in the middle as we expect check the air from the vents and it should be boiling hot as the heater system's working if you're getting no heat at all then rev the engine up a bit to get it going but there shouldn't be any need and we expect to feel really hot air start coming out of those that's it, fine, it's boiling hot, gauge is in the middle, yeah, bloody hot in there, and because uh, it is a hot day and the heat is on, well, that's what you expect. Right, I'm quite happy with that, um, so we don't remove the cap or the bleed screw anymore, you only introduce air into the system. So I get rid of the catch uh, tank and clean up underneath the car, because the stuff is poisonous to cats and dogs, four hours later, cap off check the level it's dropped a couple of inches that'll take about half a pint and that's exactly what you'd expect as the coolant has contracted as it cools down so half a pint or so and make the float float or maybe a bit higher go out for a test run that's the best plan the heater's still on full heat so I'm getting actually boiled here give it a bit of welly make sure there's heat coming out of the vent and the gauge is in the middle and that's fine that's bang in the middle uh, as we did the procedure properly I wouldn't expect anything different right with everything bled if you still got problems with overheating then you have something wrong with your cooling system and it's not the fact you bled it incorrectly because using this method works absolutely every time normal problems are a slight leak a tiny leak um, and what happens is as the engine cools down it will introduce air into the system and that will cause the system to boil. Another problem you might have is that when the car's stopped and idling it overheats and that is invariably the viscous coupled fan. Um, I've done a video on that and that explains exactly how it works and exactly how to test it without poking it with a rolled up newspaper. Right, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. And what I'm going to do next is get the Dremel out and take that expansion tank apart and show you exactly how it works. Because they are very clever things, especially the way that it separates the air from the coolant. And they're very complicated. There's all sorts of bits of plastic inside and they all fall apart eventually. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.